Hi everybody, Dr. Richard Stevenson here, and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. And we're a teaching center with a focus on hands-on courses to improve your skills and knowledge. Today we're going to cover the ceramic onlay part two, the preparation. You recall in the previous video, we did the clean out. So let's get started with this preparation. You can see that the tooth has uh, significant issues, a crack on the distal, uh, fairly wide isthmus in some areas, and uh, these class six erosive areas. So we're gonna go ahead and start the prep with the Burr 847KR016. I like this burr a lot because it is 1.1 millimeter wide at the tip and 1.6 at the widest part of the diamond area. And you can use this for a lot of different preparations. It's one of the burrs in the SDS burr kit. We're doing the C-plane reduction, in other words, a non-functional cusp. We'd like to have this about 1.5. Sometimes the Prep could be reduced only maybe a millimeter if the function allows that, but you're gonna have a little less room for anatomical design. You know, the grooves can't be quite as deep and it's gonna be a little bit less strong than 1.5. You could go two millimeters as well. It's gonna be quite thick, but it'll give you a lot of opportunity to create some beautiful anatomical grooves. This is the 1.5 RGS showing you that we're not reduced quite enough so we're going to go back at it again with a little bit more reduction on that C-plane. I like to start on the C-plane. That's the aesthetic plane on this tooth. It's the uh, reduction that is going to really matter in terms of how we're going to manage that facial cusp reduction to make it look nice. This is the RGS-4, which is 1.5 wide. And that's just another way to check your, your reduction. So it looked pretty good, but if we look at it from the facial view, it's under-reduced. So we've got to tip the bird just a little bit flatter to get the reduction in that area that we want. One of the things we can do when we're deciding how to angle the burr is to parallel the cusp inclines. That's usually a pretty good idea. And don't make it flat like this, but follow that angle. And that same angle will be used for the functional cusp and then we're going to show you the technique where the B-plane will be established so that we know that we have enough clusal clearance. It's a pretty cool trick, and we'll show that coming up in just a few minutes. But the A-plane is typically going to be parallel to the C-plane. So at this point, let's just continue with the C-plane, the facial cusp reduction, and rise up the triangular ridge to the crest, and then lower the bird down on, on the mesial side. So you're trying to mimic the morphology of the cusp, and this will make a difference because when you go to cement your ceramic restoration, it will follow the flow of the cusp and it tends to make it look a little bit nicer rather than have it go straight across. Of course, some clinical situations won't allow you to do this because you have defects or caries or things like that, but when you have a choice, it's always nice to do. We really don't have to take the burr quite this far towards the adjacent tooth because we are going to drop a box back here. But in this case, there, there is a space between the teeth which we are going to correct. And that's going to require a modification to the proximal box on the distal. It's going to be wider than it normally would be so that we can get proper contours to close that space. Now you can see the C-plane as it's finished and the angulation here on the C-plane will be used to create the A-plane. C-plane, A-plane, or functional cusp bubble. So let's go ahead and use the same technique where we're going to be cutting down and using the thickest part of that diamond to tell us how far we need to cut into the tooth and then we're going to shave the adjacent areas to match that initial cut. Essentially, it is a depth groove, but it's more like a depth plane, isn't it? Because we're, we're not making a bunch of little depth grooves that we connect together. And I think that if you've been watching some of my other videos, you know I don't really like doing that because it tends to leave a lot of 
little grooves between these uh, reductions that are hard to remove. And just another view, and I'm speeding up the video, showing us reduce that mesial lingual cusp. You can also look at that class 6 erosion area and watch it disappear, and that's also a good judge of how much to reduce, because you know you need to go way past that in order to have the proper reduction. The RGS4, once again, to verify that we're producing okay. And this can be used intraorally. Uh, I use these all the time. And it's surprising uh, how many times I'm underproducing. Look at the marginal ridge of the adjacent tooth. This could be a really great clue uh, as to where you need to produce. So one of my lab technicians told me one of the first things we look at with crown preparations or onlay preparations, and we look at the adjacent marginal ridges and see if the doctor reduced enough, and it's surprising how much of the time uh, we underproduce in those marginal ridge areas. You can see at this point that the A plane looks to be completed. Now we're going to create the B plane. And the objective with the B plane is to reduce the appropriate amount, do it at the right angle, and the way to find out that you've done it right is to line up your prep cuss tip where the adjacent unprepared cuss tips are. So I'm just marking this here to show you our goal is to reduce the B plane such that the lower ink mark will represent the cuss tip of our preparation. And this is a great way to verify that you've got adequate clearance. This is one of the Planes is very difficult to measure intraorally, and it's oftentimes an area of underreduction. So let's just go ahead and utilize this trick to reduce the proper amount. And you see how the black mark there on the mesolingual cusp is now the height of that cusp. It's a terrific technique, and it's just about foolproof as long as you've done the C plane and the A plane correctly. So our distal box extensions are going to be quite a bit wider in this case because we do want to have adequate space to create the contours. I'm going to use a KS0. This is a great burr because it's round-ended. It's narrow enough so you can easily place it between the teeth. It's only a millimeter wide. So go ahead and drop this burr interproximally. Keep it away from the adjacent tooth. Even if there wasn't a space, this burr would work quite well. Uh, you can go a little bit more axially to avoid hitting the adjacent tooth. And much like an amalgam or a composite, you're going to create these undermined little lips on the buccal and lingual walls, which you can knock off with a hand instrument. Now it looks like, oh, that's great, we're done with the box. No, we're not even close because we need to make that box wider so that we can have adequate contour and not just a little bulge to close the space between the teeth. So we want to be conservative, but at the same time, we want to try to mitigate this open contact problem that perhaps the patient was complaining about. So that requires a wider box. The burr is not tapered, so you are going to need to tip the burr buckly and lingually. And also mesially in this case, to create the axial wall occlusal convergency. And the same thing on the mesial. So we're looking a little bit better now, but it still needs to be refined. This is a nice burr to remove little under my lips. It's the 8850012. You've seen me use this burr in other videos. And what I like to use this for is removing those little lips, those little C shapes out on the, on the edges there, those little bird beaks there. And it's so small, it's easy to get in here and use this burr on all four of those walls. Pretty simple. So at this point, let's go ahead and create the shoulder on the functional cusps, and we're going to utilize the burr we've used since the very beginning, which is the 847-016, and just use the bottom portion of the A-plane as your guide and just flatten that wall out a little bit. There is another technique uh, called the V-prep, where you don't actually create this functional cusp bevel. I think that that preparation design is inherently flawed, uh, we've performed a study at UCLA looking at that design for strength, and one of my students obtained her master's degree writing a thesis on uh, a, a 
laboratory study looking at the strength of onlays with the V prep versus this prep. I think that if you use 8881, 012, 1.2 millimeters in the slow speed and the high speed, you can really make things nice and smooth. And these little transitions, see right there, you don't want to leave that sharp edge. That just creates a real problem for the technicians. So we want to round those little corners. And, and this is what really kind of takes the time with an onlay is all these little details. We really have to fuss with this and make the preparation finish line as continuous and smooth as possible. Everything on the outside should flow. No sharp edges should be in place anywhere on the outline form nor on the internal form. So let's round those areas off. It's a little bit tricky, but with some practice you can get quite good at this. I'm just speeding up this section to show you how we would use this burr to round off all sharp edges between the axial pulpal uh, area and also all those vertical wall areas where the isthmus meets the B plane and C plane. I think slow speed or electric handpiece is, is ideal. When I'm using an electric handpiece, I'll slow it down to 500 or 1000 at times and I'll use the microscope or at least very high magnification to make the corrections. I would say that this part of the procedure is the longest uh, step. It takes quite a lot of time and focus and discipline to look at every little detail and try to improve them as best you can. So when you're finished you have a pretty nice flowing outline form and I think that uh, it, it's worth the extra time to do this. This is at RGS3 showing you that the boxes are a little more than a millimeter deep axially and that's great. That's uh, plenty of thickness and about a one millimeter uh, shoulder on the lingual single C plane which is going to create this butt joint out on the facial. Round everything off. It takes effort but it is so important. Take a look at this from the facial. You can see it replicates the cusp shapes and then the transition there on the distal facial is very smooth between the box and the occlusal reduction. So here's the final prep. Far from perfect, but I think it's going to work for us. In our next video, we are going to prepare the MO inlay on tooth number two adjacent to this onlay, take a final impression, and send it to the lab. Thanks for watching and wishing everyone a happy holiday season. Take care.